Welcome to Living Our Faith with Archbishop Jerome Listecki. The latest news, important issues, and stories of Catholics living their faith in the Archdiocese of Milwaukee. Here's co-host Bob Bennis. Good morning to everyone in the Archdiocese of Milwaukee. Thanks for being here with us. We are on our Advent journey, and our conversation continues as we talk with people who, like us, make up our Catholic faith. We're going to talk today to a priest here at the Archdiocese of Milwaukee whose brother is a priest and whose other brother is going to become a priest. And we are going to talk about the Year of Mercy, which uh, just began this week. It was declared by Pope Francis earlier in the year. It runs all the way through November 20th of next year. Before we meet our guest, let's welcome the host of the show, Archbishop Jerome Listecki. Good morning, Your Excellency. Good morning, Bob. Good morning. And, And when you talk about the Year of Mercy and all of the things that go into the Year of Mercy, give us just a quick thumbnail of some of the things that that are taking place here at the Archdiocese to celebrate to start the celebration of the Year of Mercy. Well, um, here at the Archdiocese, we developed a, a, a schema of um, uh, of the celebration of uh, of both the uh, corporal and spiritual works of mercy. So that'll happen. We have designated a um, um, a missionary mm-hmm. in the Year of, uh, of Mercy. So uh, net. That is um, um, Father Ken Omernick from St. Charles sure. in, uh, in Heartland. Mm-hmm. And Father Ken, having a tremendous spiritual background, will um, uh, will, will help in terms of uh, directing people to understand the, the various corporal works of mercy and to see how they can incorporate those corporal works and spiritual works of mercy into their lives. He also will um, uh, be directing us in terms of um, the necessity for reconciliation and the uh, the need to make reconciliation a part of it. Uh, but as you can, and there'll be, of course, the holy doors, and in each of the, the segments of the um, uh, of the archdiocese, as well as especially in the cathedral, there will be a door that's designated as the holy door for those who are making pilgrimages uh, to be able to come in, and mm-hmm. all in in this a sense of enhancing uh, the the understanding of God's mercy in one's life and understanding the the great spiritual um, mercy of God that extends to us for anyone who reaches out uh, to him. And I would venture that there are people sitting in the pews at parish level who have heard of the corporal works of mercy, have heard of the spiritual works of mercy. This will be an opportunity for this to drill down to parish level for people to have a better understanding of what those seven corporal uh, works spirit, are and the and seven, seven spiritual, spiritual works sure. of mercy type of thing. I always like teaching the ignorant, Bob. That's uh, that's a favorite of mine. I, and that's I why I seminar- enjoyed doing the show with you so, so much. Early, so I... <laughs> I figured I fulfilled that one, you know. And, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce our guest Hi, today? We are would, really please. happy to have uh, uh, with us Jacob Strand. Um, Jacob, who is a um, um, an associate pastor at St. Monica's Parish, and um, uh, was ordained just a couple of years ago, I believe, wasn't it? Three and a half years ago. Three. Yes. Oh my gosh! Time three, flies. Time flies. Tempest we have fun. Indeed. And who ordained you, a priest? Oh, I have to think really hard about Come that. On. Oh, oh, oh gosh, well, maybe, 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 maybe really Archbishop hard. Listecki ordained me <laughs> a priest. That's right. right. That's right. So, now, can we tell uh, our listeners a little bit about your uh, your faith journey, about the story, a little vocational call type of thing. Sure, sure. No, I'd be happy to. Um, I grew up in a very Catholic family. Um, we were very connected to our home parish of St. Bruno in Dousman. Uh, growing up, very much admired uh, both of my pastors as a child, first Father John Hanley and then Father John Schreider. Both offered me a great example example of what a diocesan priest, what a parish priest really was, a real example of holiness for me. I never really thought about being a priest, though, when I was young. Um, I put most of my energy into playing sports, like a lot of young guys. Uh, so I played basketball, football, and baseball um, all the way through my senior year of college. Uh, I'm sorry, college, uh, high school. Um, worked really hard academically, like most young guys. Uh, also worked hard to be popular and just tried to put the fullness into life. Uh, I think, though, later on in my life, uh, a lot of those seeds of the faith that were planted in my parish really began to bear fruit as I recognized um, how God's love for me really was unconditional and that it wasn't dependent upon anything that I could do or produce or anything that I had to show anyone else. Uh, that was a really important realization because growing up and putting so much time into sports and academics and seeking to be popular and things of that sort, I think what I was implicitly doing is trying to win the 
approval of other people and to be validated in their eyes, etc. And then there was a realization, it really was receiving a gift of God's mercy when I recognized that God loved me regardless of what I was able to produce or in any ways that I was able to succeed. And that was one of the first times I realized just how deeply God cared about me. That realization was so profound and so life-changing for me, uh, I began to recognize that maybe I'm called to tell everyone about this. And that's when the idea of priesthood first entered my mind. But <laughs> uh, when it first entered my mind, I was very, very afraid. I didn't want to have anything to do with it. And so I just kind of put it in the back burner and hoped that it would cool off there. But uh, the more I prayed as I stayed in connection with the church and received the sacraments, the more that idea of becoming a priest grew stronger and stronger in my mind. And it says a lot about your family life and the encouragement you received from your family, given that your older brother is a priest, you're, you're a priest, and as I mentioned at the outset of the show, and now your younger brother is about to become a priest. So tell us a little bit about that, about that, that the culture of the domestic church at home, sure. at the Strand home. Yeah, the family dynamics are certainly important. Mm -hmm. um, it's also interesting, though, that my parents never really encouraged us to be priests when you, we were young. And so it was a surprise to both myself and my brothers, as well as to my parents. It was a surprise to everyone. When my oldest brother, now Father Luke, uh, decided that he was going to enter the seminary, he felt God was calling him. Everyone was shocked, but for my parents, it was their first boy. And so that made sense, and that was manageable. When my uh, brother Vince, who's also older than I am actually, when mm -hmm. he decided that God was calling him to enter the Society of Jesus and be a Jesuit, also ordained a priest, uh, that was even a bigger shock than Father Luke. Um, but, uh, you know, my parents very selflessly gave him up as well. It's a religious <laughs> life. Um, when I first broke the news that I was considering being a priest, wow. um, no one could believe it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the Lord's ways are certainly mysterious. As our Holy Father says, he always likes to surprise us. And thank God you have a sister who is now yes, married. I have a sister married. who is married, um, and she lives in the area as well. So she's the one that teaches most of us about life, to be honest. Wow. Now, Father Luke was the one who who performed the marriage were you did you yeah so i was not ordained yet you, were you so, a, a deacon at i, the I time? wasn't even a deacon it was wow. before that so i was just an acolyte at the mass so you you and your brother vince were active. yeah so vince and i had to do the serving role wow, wow. that's right wow Wonder, wonderful wonderful and we are talking about um, uh, mercy and understanding uh, god's mercy it's, it i always think it's uh, wonderful to take a look at the pope's uh, model Mm. Which is uh, really kind of a play on, um, uh, which, uh, which is really a play on uh, the the call of Jesus to to Matthew, mm -hmm. and uh, and it, it, it the the play on the words are God's extended His mercy in the call, you know. Mm. So it's you know the, the 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 call was God kind of overpowering and bringing that person mm -hmm. person in, and it certainly has been characteristic of the the present pontiff is. His identification with uh, uh, with the, with the poor and the and the downtrodden, even mm -hmm. in the taking of the name of Francis. Uh, sure, of course. Yeah. yeah, Francis is one himself who really extended mercy, uh, and that's how he first began to live his life of holiness. Yeah, so it it came as no shock, I think, to to many when he decided to focus in uh, on a year of of mercy, mm -hmm. uh, helping the uh, to form and to fashion the entire church in understanding. Um, how they can participate in in God's mercy by extending his mercy through them to, to brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And that's really what it is, extending the mercy that we have received. Um, all of us, when we come to a deeper conversion in our lives, when we come to understand the love of God for us more profoundly, what's happened is we have received God's mercy into our own hearts. Mm -hmm. And then when our hearts are full of the mercy of God, we are then impelled to go out and to spread that mercy as well. And do you think as the Pope looked out across the world, once he became the Pope and saw everything that was taking place, do you think that had an impetus into declaring the Jubilee Year of Mercy? I, I don't think that anyone who in, encounters those who are in need, especially mm -hmm. in the extreme situation, um, can, ever, um, can, ev can ever walk away or back away from uh, extending mercy. 
I, I think it, I, I agree with uh, uh, Father Jacob. I think the very first thing is the fact that we understand God extends his mercy to us. To which us. Is, mm-hmm. um, uh, but then if, if that fills our life, how can you back away from those that you see in need? And Father Jacob, you actually spent some time with uh, M- M- uh, Mother Teresa's sisters in Ethiopia, didn't you? Yeah, I had the great gift of spending just about two weeks with the missionaries of charity in wow. Ethiopia um, who were serving the poorest of the poor, those who were, who were entirely marginalized in the slums of Ethiopia. The conditions were absolutely horrendous, but the missionaries of charity just brought an amazing joy and uh, hope to these really, really desperate places simply by the fact and by, by the way in which they did extend God's mercy. Again, though, getting into their own life, the missionaries of charity, those sisters who followed Mother Teresa and really are these wonderful examples of holiness for us, um, they spend a long time every day receiving the mercy of God. Most don't know this, but every missionary of charity prays at least four hours a day, and they never compromise that time of prayer or sacrifice Mm -hmm. it because they know if they're going to be doing this very difficult work in the slums, serving those, seeing Christ in those who are in immense immensely more difficult situations than we are, um, they really need to be full of the mercy of God. And that's what gives them that strength in the, to persevere in their ministry in very tough places. How did that change your perspective when you, when you came back after those two weeks out? Because where you come from and where you were and then coming back, how did that change? Yeah, it was radically different. Um, <laughs> leaving a first world country mm-hmm. and then, um, when my plane descended over Addis Ababa in Ethiopia for the first time uh, and seeing the level of poverty there was uh, really quite quite a shock. But I think what it did for me above all else is through the Missionaries of Charity example, I was able to recognize how they could see Christ in all people, especially those who were poor and those who were suffering. Mm -hmm. Um, Our Lord lowered himself in taking on our human condition in such a beautiful way, and so he really can be seen in those who are suffering in terrible ways, Uh, but it's challenging. So the Missionaries of Charity really offered me a great example um, in so far as they did that very well. When we're talking in terms of the corporal and spiritual works of mercy, um, the corporal works uh, of mercy are those that affect the, the body, mm-hmm. uh, and the spiritual are those that, are, um, that affect basically the, uh, the relationship, our relationship to one another in and through Christ. Bob, I know you know the corporal and spiritual works of mercy. Why don't you tick them off for us? Well, we start with feeding the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, we shelter the homeless, we visit the sick. We visit prisoners, oftentimes forgotten. Visit the prisoners. We bury the dead, and we give alms to the poor. And those spiritual? Uh, those seven are, we counsel the doubtful. We induct, instruct, as you mentioned before, instruct the ignorant. <laughs> That's right. Which, again, is, is right. why I'm here. Uh, <laughs> we admonish sinners. We comfort the sorrowful. We forgive injuries. We bear wrongs patiently. That's a tough wow, one. Bear hard one. wrongs hard one. patiently. And we pray for the living and the dead. And speaking of praying for the dead, we have a guest coming up next week who belongs to the Dead Theologian Society, so we'll learn more about that next week. When we come back, we want to talk a little bit more about this the the entire year that's coming up, but we're going to take a break now. Uh, We're talking to Father Jacob Strand from St. Monica Parish. You're listening to Living Our Faith with Archbishop Jerome Listecki here on Relevant Radio for Southeast Wisconsin. This is Bob Bennis of Relevant Radio, and I want to tell you about a Catholic-owned, Catholic-proud car dealership. That dealership is Uptown Motors. My wife loves her 2015 Ford Fusion, and a fellow parishioner loves his 2015 Ford Fusion. Our parish, St. Agnes and Butler, loves the donations they receive from Uptown Motors. Here's Uptown Sales Manager Jeff Sardina. Our faith teaches us to give back to our community and to others. At Uptown Motors, we've always believed in this. Stop in at one of our three dealerships and purchase a new or used car, and we'll donate $200 to the parish of your choice. This is not a sales promotion or a limited-time offer. This is who we are. Visit Uptown Ford Lincoln on Mayfair Road in Milwaukee or Uptown Chevy Dodge Chrysler Jeep on Highway 60 in Slinger, and remember to say you heard this ad on Relevant Radio. Uptown Motors, a family business from generation to generation, Catholic-owned and Catholic-proud. We're talking about the Year of Mercy here on Relevant Radio. Our guest is Father Jacob Strand. Father Jacob is the associate pastor at 
St. Monica Parish in Whitefish Bay, and St. Eugene over in Fox Point. Now, you, you know, Father Jacob, uh, interesting, uh, we listened to all the corporal and spiritual works of mercy, and I, I think knowing you, you, you'd like to put everybody on a plane and take them to Ethiopia. And <laughs> if have, it were possible. Right, and have them experience that. But it, it's, it's, not, it's not possible, obviously. Uh, but w- what, what plans will you um, um, and what programs will you establish in order to help your, your communities kind of come into an understanding of the Year of Mercy? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, as a parish staff, we've been speaking about that recently now that the Year of Mercy has just begun. Uh, we recently had a great discussion about the spiritual and corporal works of mercy in regard to the suggestions that the Archdiocese has offered us about how our parishes and individuals within the parish can really begin to uh, incorporate these wonderful works of mercy into their life. Uh, so hopefully Hopefully we'll put some, we'll construct some um, larger efforts uh, to allow people to really take part in those works of mercy. Uh, we also really want to encourage people to frequent the sacrament of reconciliation, though, as well during this year of mercy. Uh, whenever a jubilee um, year is called in the church, uh, it's always a time certainly to give thanks to God, a time of great joy for the church. But it's also a time for the church to ask forgiveness and pardon for sins, so that we can receive that gift of salvation and forgiveness that God has given us. So we really hope to emphasize the importance of the sacrament of reconciliation uh, in the life of the church for all of our parishioners. Now, you know, the um, actually the preparation to do anything is extremely important. And as um, you, you talked in terms of the methodology of the, of the Sisters of Charity, in order to do the great works of mercy that they do, they're grounded in, in prayer. Um, will that be kind of your formula before basically you engage in in any activity to help your people be grounded in prayer before, yeah, uh, so that I, they don't see it just a, as a nice humanitarian action that they're right. doing, but they're actually tied into the person of Jesus Christ. Definitely. When we do good works, uh, there should be a difference in the way we do them. We should do them as Christians, those who have been touched by the love of Christ, those who have received mercy first. And so we always want to avoid that temptation of kind of putting the cart before the horse, right? And uh, seeking to go out, living these works of mercy, uh, not having fully received the gift of mercy ourselves. And so we really want to emphasize the priority of receiving God's mercy, which, which for our part requires a great act of humility. Mm -hmm. recognizing that we are broken, we are sinners, uh, and yet the Lord looks at us like um, as a merciful father, right? Always willing and ready and anxious to welcome us back into his loving embrace and forgive us. Scripture is is just filled with with, um, uh, presentations of of God's mercy, especially in, in parable form. One of the uh, the aspects, obviously, the prodigal son, which is oh, sure. the generous, mm-hmm. generous love of the father, which just welcomes back the uh, the sinner. One that I always love, though, is the little story of Zacchaeus, because I I think in in terms of Jesus extending his mercy to Zacchaeus by calling him down and saying, "I'm going to dine with you," there is an immediate transformation of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus converts and says, "I'm going to give back all that I've taken. I'm going to." Um, to share with what whatever I have, uh, and I I believe that's kind of the sense that um, in uh, that Pope Francis wants us to understand that our acceptance of of God's mercy leads us to convert our own lives to be different to mm-hmm. reestablish uh, that relationship by reaching out to brothers and sisters and generously sharing with what's been given to us. Exactly. Every time we really encounter Christ, we always go away as changed people. Uh, I think that's exactly what happened with Zacchaeus. Um, he, he climbs up the tree. Uh, Jesus calls him to come down, and then he dines with him. And so he has this profound encounter with our Lord. He comes to know him, and in that moment, uh, to love him more deeply. Uh, how can you not want to share that by giving away all that you have to follow Christ? And excuse my ignorance and refresh my memory is Zacchaeus the money counter who, right. who went up into the tree right and, and get a better and, view and of course what of we, Jesus we realize just so we we don't offend any IRS agents yeah, you sure. know out there it's uh, in 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 those days the um, uh, the the, uh, the tax collector right. collected one for the one for the Romans mm-hmm. one for me two for the Romans two for me mm-hmm. so it was a it was a fact that Zacchaeus was actually using his position uh, to um, um, make sure that uh, that he had uh, uh, 
access to funds. Not the noblest of professions in those days. No, not not at all. So <laughs> that's why Jesus constantly used, you know, that when he says sinners and tax collectors will get into heaven before right. before you, he is certainly kind of telling you immediately, you know, where you stand in the pecking order. Well, I wrote it down. So if you're there in the audience and you're wanting to learn more like I will, you'll be able to Google it later on. <laughs> good. <laughs> that is good. That is good. So in, um, there, are, are there any kind of uh, planned pilgrimages? Because obviously well, one of the things is a movement, you know, the, to, to bring people to an understanding, uh, understanding of uh, God's mercy through what we've established in the, um, uh, in the archdiocese, the Holy Doors. Uh, right. Tell us a little right. bit about the, the the Holy Door coming through the Holy Doors. Yeah. Uh, well, personally, I've never been through a Holy Door yet, so <laughs> this will be a first for me. Um, but it is a tradition every year that there's a Jubilee Year for Mercy that uh, the Holy Doors at St. Peter's Basilica are, are opened and only during that one year. So it's not all that frequent that this happens. Perhaps once every twenty five years. Um, that has already happened. So on December 8th, that door was opened up. And uh, this coming Sunday, I believe, the Holy Door at St. John Lateran Basilica in Rome will be opened. And then after that, uh, there'll be many churches that are going to designate a Holy Door, especially places that are places of pilgrimage, special shrines. Uh, here in the Archdiocese, if I'm not mistaken, Archbishop, we're going to have a Holy Door in each deanery, in correct? each deanery, right. Each deanery, right. We'll, we will have a designated Holy Door. And of course, we have some uh, very significant places already that that are almost pilgrimage mm -hmm. um, um, uh, places. Um, 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 and obviously St. Uh, St. Joseph Ott's Basilica would be one. Mm -hmm. Another one would be um, uh, Holy Hill. Holy Hill, sure. Uh, that m many people kind of basically talk about. And think. so th they would be, an, they'd be a natural place for basically the Holy Door so that when people already coming to make uh, a pilgrimage would be able to, uh, it reap the benefits of the graces that are given by um, uh, by the church declaring this a holy year. Sure. I was hoping one of the parishes where I'm assigned would be accepted to have a holy door, but we're in the same deanery as the cathedral, so I think we've, we've been trumped there. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that hurts a little. And I would think with this weekend, we celebrate the, um, the feast day of Our Lady of Guadalupe, that in Mexico City, the door there to the shrine, there's a good chance that will be open. And the, you know, the uh, the figure of Mary, mm -hmm. um, um, uh, both celebrated. Obviously, the um, uh, the Pope choosing December eighth to to announce the right. year of mercy, and then uh, right on its heels, uh, um, this December twelfth, the the person of Mary and her fiat, her willingness to to accept what God has called her to do, get, makes her. A perfect example sure for, for God's mercy. Certainly. Even just how the Holy Father wanted to begin this year on December 8th, uh, it's with the Immaculate Conception, with Mary being preserved from the stain of original sin, that we see God's great act of mercy toward his chosen people and bringing forth his plan of redemption. It's all caught up in mercy. And so it was a great time to begin it on this wonderful, on the great solemnity of our Blessed Mother. Jacob, is there, is there one image in your mind, since you've been a, a, a priest, of uh, of seeing God's mercy concretized in um, in the relationship that you've had to your parish, to your faithful, to the people that you've served. Yeah, it's an excellent question. Um, I don't know if there's one image, but I would say the images are the places where I, as a priest, um, hear confessions. Uh, those are always very beautiful moments for me. I realized how privileged I am to be a priest and stand in the place of Christ. Mm -hmm. As people come to us, uh, priests who are so um, unworthy of this role, and yet they come to us and humble their hearts before God and beg for his mercy. I often tell people that's one of the most beautiful moments as a priest. It's one of the moments where I feel so privileged because right before me is this great miracle. Uh, God's infinite mercy mercy and love colliding with our own human condition, whether being broken and rather sinful. And the result is just a beautiful experience of God's love. I, I was in, uh, in India um, and experiencing the um, uh, uh, Mother Teresa's sisters. And um, when I went to basically their, um, uh, their, little, their home that, where they took in um, uh, the downtrodden, the, the sick, um, you you saw all the natural aspects of, of help, helping those who were um, in uh, somehow um, handicapped and in some way uh, in need. But the, the the greatest visual sign that I had of mercy was there were these sisters that were holding 
these these little babies and these little deformed children. Mm. And what what I asked them, and they were all like lined up in in a row, literally on a mat, mat, and they were taking pieces of of oranges and and giving to them so that they could have some some type of sweet treat, you know. And, wow. In it, and they were basically feeding them. I asked the sisters where these children came from. Did their parents abandon them? And they said, no, these were the children taken out of the garbage heap. Unbelievable. Wow. They, wow. Were, they were literally tossed away. And when you think about that, you know, in the, in the sense of mercy for me was so important there because, you know, really God's taken us from the garbage heap of, of life and holds us just like these sisters, you know, held these discarded children. And uh, Pope, Pope Francis talks about that we live in a, a generation of discarded individuals, mm-hmm. the, you know, uh, uh, that we live, you know, where we we quickly take uh, it, uh, take something and we throw it out. Mm-hmm. We, we never kind of preserve it. We never hold it. And yet God has something through us that he holds always dear and then tells us that basically we should do the same, mm-hmm. you know, for, for others. Precisely. Yeah. yeah, our Lord loves us so much, he wants to transform us, right? He doesn't just want to start over. That's right. He wants to see his yeah. grace operative in transforming and, our lives. And, and to love us where we are and who we are, you know, with, with our defects, with everything that kind of um, uh, pulls us away from those things that we think as perfect. God, God it still embraces us and calls us He meets children. us right there. Yeah, he meets us right there. The year of mercy has begun. What will it mean for you at parish level? You'll find out over the course of the next year. We'd like to thank our guest, Father Jacob Strand. We're going to take our final break with a reminder that this show will repeat both Saturday and Sunday morning at 930. Everything you need to know about the Archdiocese of Milwaukee, right there at archmill.org. And you can check things out on Facebook. Thanks for joining us here on Relevant Radio. We'll be right back. This is Bob Bennis of Relevant Radio, and I want to tell you about a Catholic-owned, Catholic-proud car dealership. That dealership is Uptown Motors. My wife loves her 2015 Ford Fusion, and a fellow parishioner loves his 2015 Ford Fusion. Our parish, St. Agnes and Butler, loves the donations they receive from Uptown Motors. Here's Uptown Sales Manager Jeff Sardina. Our faith teaches us to give back to our community and to others. At Uptown Motors, we've always believed in this. Stop in at one of our three dealerships and purchase a new or used car, and we'll donate $200 to the parish of your choice. This is not a sales promotion or a limited-time offer. This is who we are. Visit Uptown Ford Lincoln on Mayfair Road in Milwaukee or Uptown Chevy Dodge Chrysler Jeep on Highway 60 in Slinger, and remember to say you heard this ad on Relevant Radio. Uptown Motors, a family business from generation to generation, Catholic-owned and Catholic-proud. We'd like to thank our guest today, Father Jacob Strand from St. Monica Parish up in Whitefish Bay and St. Eugene in Fox Point. Father Jacob, thank you very much. And as we always like to do at the end of the show, we'd like to close in prayer, Your Excellency. Sure, and I'm going to ask Father Jacob to uh, lead us in uh, in prayer, and I'll close with a blessing. I'd be honored. So this is the year for the Jubilee year, the prayer for the Jubilee year of mercy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us to be merciful like the Heavenly Father, and have told us that whoever sees you sees him. Let the Church be your visible face in the world. Send your Spirit so that the Jubilee of mercy may be a year of grace from the Lord, and your Church, with renewed enthusiasm, bring good news to the poor, proclaim liberty to captives and the oppressed, and restore sight to the blind. We ask this through the intercession of Mary, Mother of Mercy, you who live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us today. We wish you a happy, wonderful weekend and remind you to see with God's eyes. This has been Living Our Faith with Archbishop Jerome Listecki and co-host Bob Bennis. Join us again next week for the latest news, important issues, and stories of Catholics living their faith in the Archdiocese of Milwaukee.